Asman Gold, you love making videos where you present yourself as someone who knows everything about the topic being addressed, but to ignorantly talk about what's going on in the Middle East and then side with the people that literally see you as a subhuman in their own religious books and say that you don't deserve to be alive and the best thing you can get is be their slave is a new law for you. Now, whether it's because you are brainwashed like most of the people in this world and your fragile ego combined with the lack of critical thinking made you think like this, or it's just because you want some more money from your slave masters, I'll leave that to you. Starting with... If you want to consider a genocide as a systematic killing of a group of people, they have genocide built into Sharia law right now. So no, I'm not going to cry a fucking river when people who have genocide that's baked into their laws are getting genocided. I don't give a fuck. So what you're saying is you are fine with what Hitler did in World War II, and you're also fine with all the humanitarian laws being broken, all the international laws being broken, and all the United States resolutions and Security Council resolutions being broken as well. Yet somehow, you still think that Israel is the victim here. And if you want to talk shit about Sharia law, at least do your own objective and independent research just so you don't come off as an ignorant idiot that got his information from Hollywood movies or some propaganda that they were born into. Sharia law is nothing different than living a Muslim life. Not stealing, not drinking alcohol, not committing so many sins. And the funny part is that these Sharia law rules fit with so many other religions, so many other cultures, and most if not all of the Western laws and values that you like to preach about in your video. And if Sharia law is actually as bad as what you're claiming it to be, then you would have 2 billion plus Muslims around the world unaliving anybody that isn't part of their religion. But I'll give you one difference between the Sharia law and your pathetic laws. We don't give pedophiles a chance. We don't categorize them as minor attracted people or vote them to become our presidents. If you touch a kid here, it will be the last thing you will ever do. And that is just one of the thousands of things that a lot of Westerners would highly agree on when it comes to Sharia law. And they go with the international laws and your own laws as well. But that's under the condition that they actually read it from the source instead of listening to some news propaganda. Sadly, critical thinking is a global rarity these days. They're terrible people. It's not even a question. Are they terrible people, specifically the Palestinians? No, but they did make a huge mistake in the 1930s and 40s, which is that they gave refuge to the Holocaust survivors that ironically had this on their boat when they arrived to Palestine. The same Palestine that they say it's a land without people for people without a land, yet somehow that land already has ports, schools, everything you need, an entire country. Palestinians had a community of Muslims, Christians, Jews, all living together, all living in harmony, all living in peace, yet somehow when those survivors showed up, that's when the problem started. They played the victim role, they took the residency from the Palestinians because they treated them so nicely and they were like, you are the same as us. What we have is what you have. This is how nicely they were treated. And then they proceeded to all words, kill, and kick out anybody that is left alive from their own home. And this is not me saying it. I don't need the journalist's proof. I don't need the historian's proof. I don't need all the undeniable documentation. Do you know why? Because these are the own words of the Israelis themselves being proud to be all wording kids, being proud to put people in cages and kill them. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. Do you know what's actually crazy? There is a law that fits the description you're talking about, where killing people that are innocent and unarmed, all wording kids, yes, yes, you heard that right, all wording kids is justified. Lying to people and dividing them so they can be weakened before you conquer them, and more disgusting things that will make you throw up when you read it. But it's not the Sharia law, it's not the Christian law, it's the Talmud, the book of the Israelis, the book that they use to do any single crime and then call themselves victims if somebody retaliates. The book of the people that own every single aspect of the USA and keep milking it nonstop. And if anybody wants to doubt me, look up what AIPAC is, A-I-P-A-C. You guys don't even have any democracy in your country. You only have two parties and both parties are owned by the same people and the same companies which all trace back the same exact group of people. That is the only religion where genocide is baked into their laws. And even in their own books and their own meetings, even that are published on the internet, they say that we need to divide between Christians and Muslims because their unity is a problem. They'd be doing the same thing. They've been doing the same thing. When Jews were being prosecuted around Europe, who gave them refuge? Who gave them protection? 
Who gave them equal rights? Oh, and when a city was being conquered, instead of it being pillaged, the people in it being killed or R-worded or something like everything in the Middle, Middle Ages, none of those happened. People were allowed to stay. They were allowed to stay on their own religion if they wanted to. They kept all their belongings. And who did that? The Muslims. Because that is part of the Sharia law. And if they be doing the same things, why didn't they instantly start doing that as soon as those Holocaust survivors arrived in the 1930s and 40s? Why didn't they start right on the ports when they could have? Why wasn't there any anti-Semitism and Jew hate before the 1930s and 40s? And why was there Jewish communities all over the Middle East before Israel existed? Do you even understand and know how Israel was established, you idiot? After the Palestinians welcomed the survivors, those survivors started making their own small gangs and militia groups and started bombing places, including bombing the Brits themselves, by the way. And then colonial Britain, who has no right in that land, said that this land is now for the Israelis. We will call it Israel. And every single person here that is genetically indigenous to that land has no saying and needs to leave or live under this new rule. And if that rule was like, you know, a fair one, fair enough, but look at now how things are. If you're not an Israeli Jew, you're a second-class citizen and you're harassed non-stop, or you're living, you're living in an apartheid state where you have your own dirty streets and then they have their own nice places. And how much did they kill? As many as they can. How much did they kill? So what would you do if you were in their place? What would you do if you got backstabbed by the same people that you were trying to help? And for 76 plus years, you were telling the world to help. You were asking for democracy. You were asking for international law, humanitarian law, and nobody did anything. And on top of that, they looked at you as the person that's the problem. They looked at you as the, the criminal instead of the victim. What would you do after 76 plus years of patience? I wouldn't even wait one day if somebody did that to me. And I'm pretty sure anybody watching this video would say the same thing about themselves and their loved ones. And under international law that we have today, that is a joke because nobody who follows it actually, Palestinians have the right to do literally whatever, literally whatever they want to kick out the colonists. And that anything includes the things that Israelis are claiming that Hamas did on October 7th, yet there's not a single ounce of proof that they did it. They're not able to kill as many people as Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. That's it, just takes enough, that's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. And of course they're not the same as you. They don't lie, they don't create wars so they can establish governments that submit to them. They don't even create wars just so they can come over and steal oil like they did in Iraq and like they did in Syria and so many places all over the world. If you want to talk about international law, lying, killing, and the long, endless list of crimes, nobody, and I mean nobody, comes close to what the West has been doing in the last century. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible, it kills people for their identity, and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for, and it is an inferior culture in all ways. Inferior and kills people for their identity. Really? I'm sorry, next time somebody tries to colonize me, I'll simply bend over and tell them to proceed. Ever since Israel came into power, if not even before, I dare you to name one time where Western values were actually about actual values and human values, and it was not about war, selling weapons and stealing oil and establishing obedient governments. The Middle East didn't have a single problem until the West came in and specifically came in with Israel's existence. This did not start on October 7th. And if you are one of the people that think like that, then you also have to say that you are fine with being colonized, killed, and so many more disgusting things for 75 years without anybody trying to help you, or even retaliating by yourself. And speaking of October 7th and the innocents that were killed, look up something called the Hannibal Directive. And that is not me saying it, this is Israeli newspapers like Yadi Ad Ahranot, Haaretz, Channel 12, and so many other places saying it, coming from them themselves, that they said that we issued that directive on October 7th because it's better to kill our own citizens than have them being taken hostage. Hamas does not have weaponry that is able to destroy thousands and thousands and thousands of cars all lined up. But do you know who does? The Apache pilot that released a video to one of those newspapers where he was shooting anybody that moves. Every single finger that Israel points at anybody is a crime that they have done. And this is not an exaggeration. Every single time they do it, there is proof, undeniable proof, that they are the ones that are doing it. And when you call them out and show undeniable proof, they don't say that we're lying. They don't say anything about how they can debunk it. 
All they say is that we're anti-Semites and we hate Jews. That's the reply. But did we lie? And it's really pathetic how the world works and nobody is mentioning this. That now you can go based on your Western values and go shit talk Christianity and Jesus Christ. Shit talk Islam and Prophet Muhammad. Shit talk a lot of religions and religious figures and nothing will happen. It's freedom of speech. But the moment you call out Israelis, it's labeled as anti-Jew, Jew hate, anti-Semite, when in reality is they did not say that people are lying. They did not say anything, but they just like to divert and point fingers somewhere else. And speaking of Western values, how about you guys do your own research and go check out how many Western, Western journalists have went to Gaza before this war and during it, have went to the West Bank, how many doctors have went there, how many lawyers have went there, and they all got killed. They all got killed for exposing the truth. Nobody debunked what they said. Nobody said they were lying and they said how they were lying. They simply got killed. Those are American citizens. And just to make sure that we are clear here, ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all those extremist groups you see in the US, they do not represent Islam. They do not represent the Quran or the Sharia law. Just like the people that claim to be Jews in Israel do not represent Judaism or the Torah. And that's why I mentioned the Talmud. That's the first point. The second point is, this is not a Middle East problem as people think. Yes, the biggest amount of damage is happening in the Middle East. The biggest, biggest amount of lives are being taken in the Middle East. The biggest amount of broken laws are happening in the Middle East. But in reality, all of this is happening because the entirety of the world is being manipulated. Look around you. Follow the money. Follow the money. Look at who owns the central banks. Look at who owns all the biggest media companies. All those people happen to have the same alignment and they always dodge things. They don't debunk them. They just dodge certain things like the points I mentioned in this video. This is a humanitarian problem. I have a lot of great people in the US that speak even more than some Arabs that I know. And they, they should be the people representing Western values. They should be the people representing an international law. But sadly, they're being censored, imprisoned, or something even worse. I can go on nonstop for months, destroying every single lying narrative your media brainwashes you with. And I dare you, I dare you to debate me. You can bring any historian with you. You can bring any um, lawyer, international law, humanitarian law, Western law, American law. I don't care. Bring the biggest army of proof that you have. And I promise you, by the end of, of that conversation, the only thing that you're going to come out with is one and only one result. Is that, that the only terrorists here are Israel and their allies. I'll give just one small example of a tweet from Eddie Cohen. If you don't know who the Cohen family is and how much lying and deception they have had in the entirety of the Middle East and the USA, you can do your own research. But this is what they posted about your own elections coming up soon. This is how they see the US people. They see you guys as goy or goyims. The best you guys can do is be slaves for them and offer them all that you have with no questions asked. And somehow people still stand with them. That's the most pathetic part. Asman Gold, you are nothing more than an entitled idiot that lives in a room that's filled with dirt. I used to say that it's only your room, but you seem like a very knowledgeable guy. But apparently your room is nothing more than a reflection of your brain and your thought process.